Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and clicking the subscribe button or subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Welcome to Freestyle Friday, where I get to do what I want. Yet yeah, another how the sausage is made or how the wine is made video. So I'm just going to give it to you straight. I'm not going to do any BSing. I'm going to tell you everything about it, or at least everything I know about it. So without further ado, let's get into this topic of sustainability. What does sustainability mean in a wine? We've covered conventional, organic, biodynamic, and regenerative agriculture, and the wines that come from them. Is there such a thing as sustainable agriculture? It turns out there is. Let's turn to Wikipedia yet again and the U.S. National Agricultural Research Extension and Teaching Policy Act of 1977. Quote, the term sustainable agriculture is defined as an integrated system of plant and animal production practices having a site-specific application that will, over the long term, satisfy human food and fiber needs, enhance environmental quality and the natural resource base upon which the agriculture economy depends, make the most efficient use of non-renewable resources and on-farm resources and integrate, where appropriate, natural biological cycles and controls, sustain the economic viability of farm operations, enhance the quality of life for farmers and society as a whole. Okay, so we got something here, but it's still a bit vague. We don't really see specific guidelines in regards to farming practices. It's more of an idea to do better. Fast forward 10 to 20 years later, and we start seeing different organizations popping up to promote sustainable wine. Some of the earliest organizations to promote sustainable wine in the 1990s were the Lodi Wine Grape Commission, Lodi Rules, in 1992. Sustainable Wine Growing New Zealand in 1997 and the integrated production of wine in South Africa in 1998. Others followed elsewhere around the world and eventually an international organization known as the International Organization of Vine and Wine, or the OIV, comes into being in 2001. The Lodi Rules are now known as Certified Green, the Lodi Rules. Also, while the organization was created in 1992, it was actually a grassroots educational program back then. It didn't become a sustainable certification program until 2005. When I first started doing research for this episode, I had wanted to create a comparison chart of the various organizations. But as I delved deeper and deeper into this, a few things became apparent. The lack of exact standards when it comes to sustainability. Everything is vague. The sheer amount of guidelines each certification has. Almost all the organizations have similar extensive guidelines. Despite the long list of quote, rules or guidelines these organizations have, they all share a common approach that can be thought of as the three legs of a tripod. Environmentally sound, environmentally feasible, and socially equitable. These are known as the three E's. These typically get broken down to various categories depending on the organization, but in general, they'll have one or more of these. Some may be combined with each other. Business management, human resource management, ecosystem management, soil management, water management, pest management, grape growing, wine production, establishment of new vineyards, social issues, waste management, all require some kind of inspection or audit, though they are all, or maybe mo almost all, voluntary in nature. Some do have random surprise inspections. Also, all require extensive record keeping in order to demonstrate compliance with the rules or guidelines. For me, the biggest thing I notice is the widespread use of the words and phrases like should, responsible, when or if possible, and as little as possible. I didn't read every single page of every organization's manuals, but the lack of specifying that a vineyard needs to be organic was surprising. It's implied in the documents that a vineyard should be farmed organically, but I never saw a requirement for a vineyard to be certified organic. They do emphasize the idea of practicing responsible farming. They encourage wine growers to use synthetics as little as possible or only when absolutely necessary. They all tend to advocate to use only just enough irrigation. One specifically cites soil salinity as a problem with too much irrigation. When it comes to winemaking, it's a similar deal. The less manipulation, the better. I didn't really see anything preventing the use of commercial yeast, 
Also, there seemed to be a lack of mentions about GMO yeast or even GMO grapes for that matter. I know at least a couple said to not use them. I may have missed this in other ones. If you remember a couple episodes ago, I talked about how I've never noticed a GMO wine grape, but that doesn't mean one doesn't exist and is making wine commercially. Only some seem to mention avoiding acid, alcohol, and other adjustments, but none, as far as I can tell, outright prohibits the use of these or such things as mega purple or oak alternatives. A big part of all sustainable certifications was water usage, the encouragement of only using as much water as necessary to clean equipment. This is tied to waste management for most certifications. On the business side, I'll put workers' rights as one of the three legs of the tripod, along with keeping a business viable. Most require employees the right to create unions or their equivalent. Many seem to have more requirements here versus making suggestions in winemaking and viticulture parts of the certification. This is one of the concepts I really like when it comes to sustainability certifications. The winery needs to operate ethically, including how it treats its employees. Renewable energy, water and waste recycling, lightweight bottling, eco-friendly packaging, consideration of transportation or shipping, etc. are typically talked about in all organizations. However, there are a few things I'm not a fan of. While certain practices are encouraged, they aren't required. There's also a scoring system here. So you can be deficient in one area, but excel in another. Maybe you practice more conventional farming, but you're stellar in adhering to winemaking and or the business side of things. Each has a required minimum, but each allows you to make up deficiencies by excelling in other areas as far as I can tell. I might misunderstand the scoring system a little bit, but my, my, my impression is you can make up deficiencies in other areas. I would like to see stricter rules, essentially. I do think that the vast majority of wineries around the world that get these certifications are, quote, doing it right. But I feel like there's too much wiggle room to allow mass-produced wines to be called sustainable. I know that sounds harsh, but, and maybe I'm missing something obvious, but I'd like to see more concrete standards. With that said, I do believe that the vast majority of wineries that have some kind of sustainability certification are doing it right, like I've already said. Maybe they're using synthetics only when necessary. Maybe they use commercial yeast. Maybe their focus is on treating their employees right and providing living wages, education opportunities, and other benefits. They are looking at the broader picture rather than focusing strictly on organic or bioagriculture. In general, there is a lack of national programs in most places. It's usually more of a local thing. South Africa is a national program, as is New Zealand and Austria, among others. California alone has at least three different certifi certified sustainable options. Some are more regionalized. It feels like a watered down version of organics or bio, but shored up by ethical business practices. I'd consider it roughly the equivalent to the certification the ROC does for regenerative agriculture, except the ROC requires certified organic grapes. Here are the most common sustainable certifications out there and their logos. Certified California Sustainable Wine Growing or the CCSW. Sustainability in Practice, or CIP Certified, for California. Certified Green, the Lodi Rules, mostly Lodi, California. Napa Green. This one can be either a vineyard or a winery. This was more common than I thought while looking at a lot of labels from here. Sonoma County Sustainably Farmed Grapes. I'll talk about them in a minute. Low Input Viticulture and Enology, or Live Certified. That's for the, for the Pacific Northwest. A lot of Oregon wineries have this, have this one. Integrated Production of Wine, or IPW. That's South Africa. Another one I'll talk about more in a minute. Sustainable Wine Growing New Zealand, or SWNZ. I'll also go slightly more in depth with this one. Bodegas de Argentina Sustainability Protocol. A lot of wineries will have this logo or something similar. Certifiable Sustainable Wine of Chile. Like Argentina, this is very common. Sustainable Australia Wine Growing, or SAW. A lot of wineries at least qualify, but I haven't seen the logo very often. Equalitas, for Italy. This one doesn't seem to be as widespread, or maybe I just haven't been exposed to the right wines. Sustainable Austria. Literally hundreds of Austrian wineries are on their list. The only program that is ran entirely by the government is the South Africa's IPW, the Integrated Production of Wine Scheme. They like to use the word scheme a lot down there. They use both the OIV and the International Federation of Wine and Spirits, or 
FIVS as the, their basis for guidelines. However, the IPW does the actual certification. The FIVS seems to concentrate on international trade of wine and other alcohol. It feels like their goal is to establish common general international standards. The OIV has more specific standards as related to the actual winemaking process, similar to other kinds of certifications. Many of the other sustainability certifications mention using OIV guidelines. They are considered the gold standard when it comes, when it comes to sustainability. South African wine is right at about 100% sustainable. The most recent figure from the Sustainable Wine South Africa, or SWSA, site is that as of 2020, 94.3% of certified wines qualify to carry the IBW seal do so. Remember, the seal is optional, so under 6% of the certified sustainable wineries choose to use the older WO seal instead, even though they are eligible to use the IPW seal. It's hard to find wines without the IPW seal. If you find one, it's usually an older vintage. Another country that is nearly 100% sustainable is New Zealand. They've been at it for a long time too, since 1997 if you remember. The latest report on the Sustainable Wine Growing NZ site is 98% of vineyards were certified sustainable in a 2016 report. That is the first and only sustainability report I could find on their site. Not sure why there hasn't been another report since then. The actual web page now says 96%, so I'll guess that's the most recent number. That's still excellent. The New Zealand Sustainable Certification is done via a third party like most other countries. A third area that is nearly 100% certified sustainable is Sonoma County in California. The Sonoma County Wine Growers has their own sustainability certification. In their 2019 report, they state that 99% of vineyards in Sonoma County are, are certified sustainable. A couple other interesting facts on the report is that 80% of the vineyards are 100 acres or less, and 40% are actually 20 acres or less. There are a lot of smaller vineyards in the county supplying grapes to the 495 Sonoma County wineries, plus other wineries in California. There are a couple sustainable or sustainable-like certifications that aren't focused on viticulture. Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEED, or L-E-E-D. They focus on buildings rather than agriculture. Salmon Safe, this is for the Pacific Northwest. They focus on runoff water not being toxic to salmon and other fish. Certified B Corporation, another certification that's very common in Oregon. They are similar to the wine sustainability certs in that they look at the entire operation and have a point system. The difference here is that this is available to any type of business. As you can see, there are a variety of organizations that will grant you a sustainable certification. These are always changing, so it can be hard to keep up with what's happening. Okay, so you might've noticed I didn't talk about Lut Raisonne or the reasoned struggle in France. This first came into being in 1989 and then became a law in 2002 with a decree that stated, I translate it from the French, reasoned production methods in agriculture consist of the implementation by the farmer on his entire farm in a global approach to it of technical means and agricultural practices in accordance with the requirements of the reference framework for reasoned agriculture. It's very similar to other sustainable systems. In 2013, this changed to the haute valeur Environmental, or HVE. In English, it's High Environmental Value, or HEV. The website for this certification states that HVE, quote, corresponds to the highest level of a more general scheme of environmental certifications for farms. The Farm Environmental Certification is a voluntary approach which aims to identify and promote particularly environmentally friendly practices applied by farmers. HEV covers four key areas biodiversity conservation, plant protection strategy, management of fertilizer use, and management of water. The associated logo for this ensures that at least 95% of base materials from farms certified as having high environmental value. I can say that in looking at a few hundred back labels of French wine, Bordeaux was the most likely to have the logo. However, this program is for all of France except for Champagne. Yeah, not to be outdone, the Champenois had to come up with their own version. It is known as Viticulture Durable en Champagne, VDC. I'm sure I really butchered the French uh, pronunciation. The website for the CIVB, the controlling body for Champagne, explains it like this. 
It is a voluntary approach that relies on the day-to-day -day commitment of Champagne winemakers in three areas, biodiversity footprint, carbon footprint, water footprint. I took a graphic from their site that lists their goals. These are as of June of 2019. All right, so from the chart, it's divided into two columns. We have over the last 15 years and their objectives for the future. So over the last 15 years, they want, they have a 20% reduction in carbon footprint per bottle, a 50% reduction in phytosanitary products and nitrogen fertilizers, 90% of industrial waste treated and recycled, 100% of wine production affluence by products treated and recycled, and 20% of area within an environmental certification. For the future, they are looking to have uh, a 75% reduction in carbon footprint by 2050. They plan to have zero herbicide by 2025. You notice in the column, the other column to the left, phytosanitary means plant health, just so you know. When it comes to com comparing the last 15 years for, the, for their objectives for the future, for the 90% of industrial waste treated and recycled and the 100% of wine production influenced by products treated and recycled, they, they have further rollout of the circular economy in the Champagne region. I'll cover what that means in here in a second. On the last line there about the environmental certification, their goal is to have 100% with an environmental certification by 2030. What is a circular economy? Well, let's turn to Wikipedia again for that. Quote, a circular economy, also referred to as a circularity, is an economic system that tackles global challenges like climate change, biodiversity loss, waste, and pollution. Most linear economy businesses take a natural resource and turn it into a product which is ultimately destined to become waste because of the way it has been designed and made. This process is often summarized by take, make, waste. By contrast, a circular economy employs reuse, sharing, repair, refurbishment, remanufacturing, and recycling to create a closed loop system, minimizing the use of resource inputs and the creation of waste, pollution, and carbon emissions. The circular economy aims to keep products, materials, equipment, and infrastructure in use for longer, thus improving the productivity of these resources. Waste materials and energy should become input for other processes through waste valorization, either as a component or recovered resource for another industrial process or as regenerative resources for nature, for example, compost. This regenerative approach is in contrast to the traditional linear economy, which has a take, make, dispose model of production. So while organic or biodynamic farming isn't specified, CIVB's goal is zero herbicides in four years. Organic does allow the use of some synthetic herbicides, but this is usually Bordeaux or Burgundy mixtures, which may or may not be banned in France. The reason I separated the French ones from everything else is to highlight that the fact that lut raisonné is an old term. Even so, many in the industry, including me, still refer to it. Just trying to set the record straight. As far as HVE, it was a surprise to me. I didn't realize that a farming style called HV existed and took over. Any of these certifications show a genuine effort of trying to protect the environment and make quality wine. Many add the treatment of workers. In some ways, it's a stepping stone to organic, bio, or regenerative organic certification. In other ways, it's an expansion of organic or bio. No matter what, seeing one of these logos indicates a winery taking their place in the world seriously. Like I mentioned before, this doesn't always guarantee adjustments or manipulation of any particular wine is not happening, just that the products and process of making the wine have a low impact to the environment. So that's gonna do it for this episode. Hope you got value from this episode. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And to, then tell all your friends. Until next time, I'm going to talk natty wine. <laughs>